I'd like to turn now to Faustine Badefossé. Uh, Faustine is an expert in this area. She is director for nature, health, and environment at the European Environmental Bureau and brings uh, an NGO perspective uh, on these issues. Uh, Faustine, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Aaron. Um, yeah, first of all, thanks a lot for the invitation. Uh, it's great to be here. And I think this sort of uh, interaction is actually very, very important. So uh, thanks a lot. Uh, Lukas was quite uh, optimistic about the transition that uh, I think he says was already in motion. Uh, without being too pessimistic, uh, I'll try to be realistic uh, and maybe uh, uh, soften a little bit uh, the optimism uh, there, at least from our perspective. Um, first, I think some of the facts uh, uh, and evidence, uh, Lukas already mentioned them, but I just wanted to uh, come back on, on, on some of them. Uh, and then I'll say a few words about uh, this, the farm to fork strategy and uh, where things are at and the risks that we see uh, for the months to come. So um, when it comes to uh, evidence and facts, uh, there is now a clear consensus that uh, our food system is economically, socially and environmentally unsustainable. And uh, from the scientific community, there is no... Um, uh, dispute on that. Uh, from the seeding of the plants that we eat or feed to the farmed uh, animal all the way to the consumption to our consumption patterns. So on the production side first, um, as much as farming is impacting uh, our environment negatively, it is also one of the very first victims of uh, that degradation. Uh, Lukash was talking about biodiversity. Uh, we now know from evidence that unsustainable agriculture is among the main driver of biodiversity loss in the EU. But on the other hand, and I think it's also very important to bear in mind that interconnectivity, it is also very much relying and dependent on biodiversity. So uh, farming is also greatly depending on biodiversity. Just to take an example, a figure here, absence of pollination would lead to a reduction of between 25% and 32% in the total production of 85% of the food crops, wordly, mainly fruits and vegetables, uh, therefore the healthier. Another figure that does not come often, but I think it's very important uh, also uh, because we, we often talk about climate, but not so much about air pollution, uh, methane coming from farming and from livestock in particular, Besides being a powerful greenhouse gas emissions, as we all know, it's also a precursor of ozone, which at ground level is, harm, is a very harmful air pollutant. And livestock is also a source of ammonia emissions, which in the air turn into dangerous small particulate matters. But also, and again, to show that interconnectivity in a way, air pollution also impacts food production. Uh, because it, it has an impact on harvests uh, as it stunts crop growth by weakening photosynthesis. So as much as farming is leading to air pollution, it is also suffering from the air pollution impacts, not just our health as human beings. Um, there were things that were said already about soils and, and some figures, so I'm not going to come back on that, but maybe uh, uh, towards more on, on, on climate. Um, well, the historical drought that we were faced with over the summer uh, reminded us how vulnerable the sector is to climate change. And unfortunately, this is just going to get uh, to get worse. But at the same time, the food system as a whole is a great contributor of greenhouse gas emissions, methane and nitrous oxide. And worldwide, it accounts for uh, more than a third of the greenhouse gas emissions. Um, <clears throat> Speaking about the livestock sector, uh, on top of being responsible of climate change, it is also a great source of water pollution and is often detrimental to animal welfare. And another risk that uh, the IPBS, so the International Panel on Biodiversity, highlighted right after the COVID uh, outbreak was that it is also potentially uh, increasing the risks of future zoonoses uh, for society and uh, for humanity. Uh, looking now at the processing and consumption side, here again, Lukas said a few things uh, about waste in particular, but the processing and the consumption is also generating uh, pollution coming from food packaging, uh, for instance, and the amount of waste that uh, we emit from food is quite uh, uh, big, as it was said before. Uh, diets is also an issue of concern. Um, actually, diets today are an important underlying cause of Europe's burden of disease, the so-called uh, non-communicable diseases, 
And actually, uh, obesity has recently become uh, one of the major health problems in the European Union. Um, and last fact here, uh, our current food system is also socio-economically unsustainable. And I will come back to that um, in, in our analysis of the farm to fork strategy because of various factors like problems of access and affordability of healthy choices, because there is no internalization yet uh, of the environmental cost and the cost on health in the prices of food, and also things like imbalance of power in the food chain. So uh, being realistic, of course, the level of challenge, if you think about all these facts and figures and, and, and the situation that we're faced with, which is quite sobering, sobering, sorry, uh, the challenges are very high, but that's not because they are high and that they require a profound change in the whole system that we should procrastinate any further, because that would mean that we assume that you will, as the you know, uh, youth, solve the problem, but the decision is in, uh, the future is in the decision that we make today. And that's why uh, this farm to fork strategy and that systemic approach to the food system, as it was proposed uh, by the commission back in 2020, and as introduced by Lukash, was certainly uh, a step in the right direction. But, and of course there is always a but, uh, there were a few things, uh, not small but quite important, that were highlighted already then by think tanks and by NGOs, uh, I would say on the shortfalls of what was proposed. Uh, first, it was uh, on the coherence uh, between the many policies that affect directly and indirectly uh, food uh, production and consumption. Uh, to name one, which is the elephant in the room, the common agricultural policy, which is very much influencing uh, food, uh, farm practices in the EU and uh, costing taxpayers more than 50 billions uh, a year. Uh, so that's quite some money that could help uh, with the transition if it were used in the right way. Unfortunately, even though the Commission actually tried, and I think it's important to highlight, uh, to align uh, uh, the CAP and the CAP strategic plans at national level with the farm to fork strategy, there was strong pushback from the member states uh, for this to be aligned. And uh, it is true that in the evaluation of the CAP strategic plans, the Commission did look at the farm to fork strategy, but uh, this was quite weak and the analyses that are now out of the CAP strategic plans are not so encouraging. And even though, of course, there will be marginal uh, positive effects here and there from, 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 from each of the plan, it is not enough for activating the transition. And again, this is uh, a loss opportunity and time is of essence. This is another, uh, you know, seven years, uh, a little bit less, but lost while we are in such an important decade, uh, which requires uh, drastic changes. Another remark that we made, uh, comments that we make on the consumption side, um, is that what has been proposed and what is in the pipeline, uh, we felt is very much focused on things like labeling and voluntary measures, which are uh, very weak, because even if uh, Lucas said that uh, consumers uh, need to change their patterns, etc., uh, it seems that the um, the package uh, ignores the fact that uh, evidence shows that food choices are actually heavily influenced, not just by, you know, consumers choosing uh, what they want to eat consciously, but by other things and things that we call the food environment, uh, like availability, accessibility of various food options, price signals, marketing and advertising, tradition, cultural habits, convenience and accessibility. So uh, that's why a fundamental system change is needed and labeling alone won't do the trick. So what's very, uh, what, the first thing that uh, should be uh, done because uh, yes, consumers react to price signals uh, would be the internalization of externalities because for now uh, the cost of the production on the environment and health, and you would have understood that it is quite high from the figures that are highlighted at the beginning, is actually not reflected uh, in the uh, cost of our food in the price that consumers pay at the end, but taxpayers still have to bear the cost of repairing the damages done to the environment and to our health. So um, some mechanisms of reduced VAT, for instance, for healthy choice could help. 
just to name the inconsistent incoherence that we're faced with today, in Germany, for instance, dairy and meat products, even though you would have understood from what I've said at the beginning and from what Lukas has said, uh, needs to be reduced. Uh, uh, they are actually benefiting from reduced VAT, while the healthy options, you know, have uh, normal VAT. So it is uh, influencing, you know, the, the choice of the consumers in the wrong direction. Um, changing, obviously, reforming the promotion policy. Uh, for now, it is still promoting things like processed uh, uh, and red meat. So uh, that should not be the case anymore uh, if we want to uh, change uh, consumers' uh, habits. Uh, but also educate children, uh, have sustainability, that sustainable diets in canteens at all level, local, regional, national. But again, uh, Lukas was mentioning that. Uh, last point that I was I want to make, which is quite worrying, is that even though um, when the Commission presented uh, its plans and uh, which we welcomed, uh, civil society organizations and think tanks uh, alike, but where we highlighted, the, of course, the things that needed to be uh, improved, um, while evidence suggested that we needed to improve the plans, the impacts of the war um, in Ukraine is leading into the other direction and has been instrumentalized by um, many, unfortunately, to slow down the development uh, around the Green Deal in general, and in particular uh, relating to food, or even to roll back on existing environmental regulation. This is what we saw happening under the Common Agricultural Policy, uh, for instance. Uh, this is deeply concerning because um, even though this these people say that the response to the crisis would be to actually produce more. Um, this crisis is just highlighting the fact that our system today is unsustainable, uh, that our intensive agriculture model is not resilient, and that the solutions actually lie within uh, farm, to, you know, farm to fork strategy and the future, hopefully, uh, sustainable uh, food system law. So, uh, yes, we really hope that uh, um, the Commission will stay strong there, uh, that the sustainable food system law, which will be, uh, uh, should be out uh, this year, later this year, um, will be ambitious enough uh, faced, you know, with all the challenges that I have uh, highlighted. Uh, because again, and uh, I don't think I will repeat that enough, the future is really in the decision uh, we make today and uh, we have uh, no time to, uh, to waste. Okay, thank you, uh, Faustine.